I'm trying to like get a symmetrical shot of my studio and I can't like, am I crazy or something? Like if this is like a, a, a square room. Like why is, can I get, okay, there we go. Cute, okay. Vlog time. So, oh, I still have my inners there. That's why I'm yelling. <laughs> So I feel like I'm the last in line really to talk about my experience at the playlist retreat. And I really feel like I needed some time to really just um, soak it all in and understand how I felt and understand like process my feelings, you know? Because on one hand, I am always astounded and amazed um, by the amazing things that God keeps bringing into my life, the amazing people, the amazing opportunities. And I don't take any of this for granted, ever. I know it could be literally someone else. Like, I don't even subscribe to being the best or think I'm the best, or am I even trying to be the best? Um, but there is tremendous amounts of favor and um, blessings and I guess a reason why he's put me in this position. And I think um, more than ever, I feel like the retreat triggered my imposter syndrome a little bit, you know? Like, even the way that I'm talking right now and the way I'm like, it could be anybody and it's just me somehow. Like, there is, like, a level of imposter syndrome that I struggle with sometimes. And I felt like this time around, for some reason, the retreat really triggered it. <laughs> the, the first time, I didn't feel that way. I don't know why. Like, I guess because I was new. I guess that's really why. But, um... I think after returning again and hearing the beautiful affirmations uh, that my peers had to say about me, it, it just triggered some sort of like imposter syndrome. And that's so weird. Um, and it made me feel highly uncomfortable. <laughs> this is so vulnerable. Um, I struggle to say that I don't feel deserving because I know I, I work hard. I work very hard. Um, everything that you see is a result of hard work, but there is like a, there's a part of this equation that um, I keep saying is not me. Um, and, I, and I equate it to God's favor. I do. And that's what kind of, I guess, maybe puts me in that sort of mindset of just like, oh, I don't know what everyone's talking about, you know? <laughs> Um, but I would say immediately getting there, I already knew some people who were going to be there by default and by nature, I'm an introvert. So I tend to gravitate to things that are familiar and people that are familiar. So one of my good friends, Jan Hunter was present, uh, Leotis, oh gosh, he goes by, he was there along with Kaylin Ellis and I'm grateful that they were there because they were a bit of my comfort zone in the midst of my uh, mental struggles that I was going through. You know, I, I really relied on them for support. And I feel like they're probably watching this like, what? Like, we did not know that. We did not know that you were feeling that way at all. Um, I have a heck of a poker face. Pocket queen. Um, but yeah, maybe you, I mean, I think people who know me well can tell when something's up, you know. Um, but there was like a lot of head games. There was a lot of mind games going on and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. I'm not, I'm not sure what was up with that. I think maybe also because 
I internally put a lot of like expectation on myself in some way to like live up to what everybody thinks I am. This is all so, I mean, but um, you know, everybody knows me as the IG girl, the girl that plays drums on IG, even though I have played on stages around the world. Um, most people know me from Instagram and, and social media. And so a lot of times I feel like my peers often box me into that category of a social media influencer drummer, which, you know, I don't have a problem with anymore. At first it used to be a chip on my shoulder. It used to be like, I'm more than that. I'm more than... Totally fine. Okay? That's totally fine with me. Because it is something I do. It is something that I enjoy doing. Um, but I guess... In the presence of my peers, I feel this internal pressure to prove that I can play in real life too, you know? So much so that I was avoiding playing at the retreat. Like, I didn't go to any of the jam sessions. Um, I went to a few, you know, and I sat down and I played a little bit, but I just like, noodle around and act acted goofy you know and me acting goofy and and not serious is a defense mechanism for the pressure that i put on myself um to perform to to measure up and it's weird because again i know no one's even asking me to do this this is all up here like <laughs> this is all in this noggin like it's I don't know, and maybe like you guys can relate in some way. Um, I've always felt like a, a black sheep. I've always felt like an underdog. I've always felt like someone who was different and just didn't fit in and wasn't accepted, you know? My whole life, in every, in every scenario, and including the music community, in any community, you know? So... Um, in my mind, I didn't fit in and my, my actions weren't making it any better. I was just very off to myself and in the corner talking to one person and it's a retreat. So I think my mental space and my head space really affected me getting the most out of this experience. Um, and... Lynette, Jeff's wife, she said something to me that was really, really, really important and I needed to hear it. It hurt. That's how I know I needed to hear it, okay? She told me, hey, loosen up. Don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, she can see. <laughs> she can see me. Oh no, I thought there was a... You know, I thought there was like a, a glass, <laughs> a mirror glass no one could see. Um, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. It was exactly what I needed to hear. And then this is probably not the recap you all thought you were gonna get. Everybody else is like, oh my gosh, there were so many people there. There was like the dude from I'm giving y'all the real of my experience, cut clear and dry. And I think that is, that's why Jeff has it set up the way he does, you know? I think it's supposed to be an exercise that brings all of those internal, internal struggles and demons out, you know? Uh, one of his rules is to leave your ego at the door to leave all of that at the door and have a good time. And uh, I let my mind get the best of me. I let my mind get the best of me. And uh, not to say I had a bad time, not to say that anyone could probably even tell any of this was going on. Like, I had a great time with my friends. We uh, laughed. We ate, uh, at least I ate a lot. Like I, I ate a bunch. I had to detox when I got back to LA because it was just ridiculous. 
Um, they kept us well fed at all hours of the day. Like there was never not food. That's one thing for sure. At the Playlist Retreat, there will never be not food. Um, and uh, I, I, it was such a pleasure to meet Joe, Joe Davis, uh, for the first time because I had um, seen him in the past. I saw his videos and to meet him in person and to experience him was incredible. He's such an amazing, humble spirit in person. Um, Joy, I enjoyed your company and it was great to meet you and I hope we can like work together in the future. I met Gareth Duncan, who is an incredible artist that I hope to collaborate more with in the future. Uh, me and Madison got a little bit of conversations going. Madison McFerrin, um, Bill Boudreau, Zoe, um, tall black guy. We went on a run. We went on a, a, a 5k run and I hope that uh, his marathon was successful. Um, these, this is all family. That's what makes this all very weird. It's like, these are all people that have supported me from jump. So I don't know why my head was so messed up. Like, I don't know. Like, these are my people. Um, there are a few new faces and maybe that was what it was too, you know? Uh, cartoons was there. Um, didn't really get to hang with him much because I was in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, James Poiser from The Roots. It was great to see you, man. It was great to talk to you. Um, such a great guy. Such a great dude. Um, who else did I enjoy? I enjoyed uh, J. Period, my guy, one of the goats, Clark Kent, um, DJ Mel. I gotta call him back. Man, that man kept me in good spirits the whole time. Like literally the best, I'm so sorry everybody who's watching, um, but literally one of the best DJs I know. It's not to say that I don't love you, everybody else, but DJ Mel, like has something going on right here. He has a special place in my heart. Um, who else? There was just so many great people. So such a such a great time, you know. And uh, hopefully you can learn something from me and all of these things that I go through. It's like similar to the whole Harry Styles thing, right? Where I was on tour with Harry and I was freaking out in my mind and it ruined the whole tour. Like, I'm gonna get a handle on it sooner or later, but I'm only making this video and being transparent with you all to let you know that if you struggle with this, you're not alone and it doesn't go away sometimes. Like, no matter how high you go. So, Please keep me in prayer. Keep me in your thoughts if you can. Um, I'm fine now, you know. Like I'm not. I'm not struggling with that right now. It's just certain environments really uh, trigger me, and I even have to get my mind together for the show next week, right? I'm playing with um, Willow Smith again. Love playing with her. Um, it's the old crew, but we have Thaddeus Trebet on bass. Uh, Derek Hodge will be conducting an orchestra. And yeah, I have to get out of this mindset where I'm making like everything about me because it's not. It's really not about me. Like no one even cares. Like no one is not, no one is looking at me. It's just like the, the commentary and all of the things that people say make me feel like I'm being looked at. But in truth, they don't hear me. Like I don't I don't even play for people to hear me. I want them to hear and feel the music. That's my goal. So uh yeah. I feel naked. Like all of everything I just said for the past 16 minutes, I feel like I know I'm showing skin, but I feel like all of this, the titties are out too, like the way that I'm speaking. But uh <laughs> um but uh 
Yeah. That's the truth of the matter. That's really, that was, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. And, uh, I'm going to keep you posted. I'm working through it. I'm going to get better and better. And you're not alone, and we're going to do this together. PQ, out.